What's up ladies and gentlemen? So in this video, we are gonna talk a little bit about flexibility and mobility. All of us out there, myself included, are guilty of probably not putting enough time or effort into our mobility. Stretching once or twice daily, which can really make us feel good, but also prevents our joints from stiffening up and starting to become dysfunctional. Now, when you were a kid, you were like a rubber band. You could twist, turn, bend in whatever shape you wanted to. You're extremely resilient to injury. You could fall out of a tree, fall off a building, whatever. You'd probably just bounce back and you'd be fine tomorrow. Now, these days, you probably get a little bit of a niggle in the gym that once upon a time you would have forgot about immediately, and it's gonna cause you problems for the next six months. What we want to try and make sure you do is take care of your joints and take care of your body, as well as making it strong, as well as getting fitter, healthier, more powerful. It's important that you have all facets of strength when doing this, because being just strong, but not flexible, Essentially, you are gonna be weak, dysfunctional, and you're gonna be unable to do certain things. When I say weak, I don't mean straight up weak, but certainly you are not as strong as you could be. You're also far more prone to injury. The same is true for if you are too flexible, but you don't have a good baseline of strength. You need to make sure that you are both strong and flexible. That way you have the structural integrity, but you have the joint health to maintain longevity in your training. Now, there are two main types of stretching that we will go through. Number one, which you should have already seen if you have done any routines, any of the training programs on the Live Up Plan so far, which is your dynamic warm-up. This is the warm-up that you're gonna do for four or five minutes before every single workout you do. No excuses. Now, a dynamic warm-up is a movement-based warm-up that allows you to get your heart rate pumping, blood around the body, nutrients around the body, ready to train. It gets the connective tissue prepared and warmed up, ready to train. It helps to activate muscle tissue, which is what we want pre-training. We want to prime that muscle, get it tight and get it ready to work in order to get a much, much better workout, but also your joints will be supple and moving properly, so you're less likely to get injury. We then go into the workout where we should be working with full range and full tempo. So we're stretching the muscle there. That is one of the most powerful ways to improve your overall flexibility and to lengthen muscles to an adequate degree. Always train to full range of motion. With that being dynamic stretching as a warm up, what I'm gonna go into in this video is your static stretching routine. So this is something really, really simple. We're gonna keep it mega simple, just work from the ground up. A static stretching routine that you can do post-workout just to help trying to lengthen the muscles a little bit in order to get more out of them and to sustain some level of health, you know, joint health specifically. What we look to do in times like this is, uh, with static stretching specifically, is hold each stretch for anywhere between 40 seconds and a minute and a half. Okay, so we are gonna start with the feet and the calves. We're gonna work up hamstring, quads, hips, up to your shoulders, and we can even do some little bits for lower back and your QL, etc., which can often tighten up. It's very, very important that you only ever stretch within your limits. Don't try to push it too far. Don't push to the point where you're shaking. Sometimes that will happen and that's your nervous system being overstimulated because you are pulling on that muscle very, very hard. This is not what we want. You know, quite often you'll see people going through stretching routines and you see yoga instructors or Pilates instructors forcing people into stretches. It's a very irresponsible thing to do. We don't want to do that. So don't do it to yourself. What you wanna do is find that point of tension where you can feel the stretch and then gently breathe into it. And over time, it will stimulate something called the Golgi tendon organ, which is going to allow that muscle to start to relax. And then you can lengthen it session by session, day by day, week by week, month by month. You're going to be able to improve that muscle health and the freedom of movement around that joint. So as I say, what we're gonna do Start from the ground up and we're gonna keep it really, really, really simple. We'll start off with the calves. Now you can do this up against the wall or just standing as you are. I'm gonna show you this side first. What you wanna do, just take a split stance and we're gonna put some pressure on that calf by squeezing the quad and pushing the knee back. What you wanna try and find is a little bit of a bind in the calf muscle, the, below the knee at the back. You wanna try and feel that stretch. If you can't feel it like this, which is very, very common, then lean up against something like so, and imagine you're pushing it. So really try to then push your knee forwards. You can do it slightly differently when you're leaning against something. Push your knee forwards so you feel a big, big stretch on the calf. And what we're trying to do at this stage is we're trying to keep the legs straight. Okay, what I can feel now, basically from my heel, my calcaneus, all the way up to the back of my knee is a big stretch along the calf. And what you may find is that you will have more tightness on one side versus the other. For me, it's the medial side. So the inside of my calf is much, much tighter than the outside. But I can also rotate my body, rotate my knee just a little bit to try and find the bind elsewhere and to just 
gradually stretch everything out. But what you'll find to start with, just keep it simple because the points of bind for you are going to be different to me or to anybody else that you happen to uh, train with. We've held for about 40 seconds on that and what I can feel is as I'm breathing through this is I can feel the tension in the muscle actually subside by about 50% and I can get more range on my ankle. Okay, so when that's happened, you can either hold the stretch for another 30, 40 seconds, which is gonna be beneficial if you have time, or we can change the stretch slightly. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and push this one down to the soleus. So once you've felt that release of tension, simply bend the knee. Okay, and what this will do is it's probably gonna put a little bit more pressure on your big toe. Once that pressure is on the big toe, you will feel what we call a soleus, which is just beneath the calf and closer to the ankle, that should start to stretch. So by bending the knee, we've released essentially the top end of the calf and the stretch has been put in the soleus. And it's important to keep that moving well, because if we don't, we can gather a lot of tension in our Achilles and all of these kind of things start to cause us ankle problems. It's important to remember, look after your feet. Your feet are your connection point with the ground. If you don't look after them, if they become dysfunctional and the, uh, the ankle becomes dysfunctional, your knee is gonna rapidly follow. When your knee becomes dysfunctional, your hip is gonna have to compensate for that. Your hip is gonna become dysfunctional. That's gonna affect your back, potentially even your shoulders. Your body is extremely clever, but everything is connected in a certain way. You may have shoulder issues because your feet don't move properly. Sounds crazy, but it's true. Right, we've held for about 40 seconds on both of them, so we're gonna to go to the other leg. So again, remember, we place that one behind and we're gonna to push towards the machine or the wall, whatever you happen to have. And we're trying to find that point of tension with the leg straight on the calf. Breathing in and make sure you're taking big deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Obviously, I'm talking to you throughout this to stop you from getting too bored, um, but make sure you're breathing in. As weird as it sounds, try to focus your breathing into that area. Try to think about that muscle releasing. I can actually see I'm relatively responsive to stretching. I can feel my calf starting to loosen off immediately. So that Golgi tendon organ is being stimulated and things are starting to change a little bit. So once I'm at that point, again, as I say, for the majority of you, you want to hold for about maybe 40 seconds to a minute and a half. I've got that, now I'm gonna bend the knee, push the weight onto the big toe a little bit, and then I can feel the tension drop from my calf into my soleus, really, really easy. And the same thing we're gonna do there, we're gonna breathe, try and send some energy down into that lower half of the leg, waiting for it to release. Hold for about 40 seconds. If it helps, you can either watch this video, because I may be doing some slightly longer than others as I talk and as I explain, but if it helps, once you know the routine and you've done it a few times, just grab your watch, and time it for 40 seconds, a minute, whatever you want, or until you really feel it release. It's gonna be different for all of us, so no stress. Okay, that one's gone for me. Again, if you need to hold it longer, please do, but we're gonna move up. So, we're going back to the other leg. One we commonly see done wrong is a quad stretch. The easiest way to do this, now there are many, many ways to do this. The easiest way is either, if you're standing, freestanding, you just hold your leg up, like so, okay? If you lose your balance, you can put your finger on your nose and it will allow you to maintain your balance. Or, very simply, just place your hand on something like this and to hold on. Now, what we always see here is people like this, with their leg out. That is completely useless. When you are doing this quad stretch, you straighten your hip up, you push your knee into the other knee to get some real tension on that quad. And again, we're gonna hold for around 40 seconds and we're gonna try and breathe into that area. Now you can get a much better stretch on this, especially on the kind of more superficial muscles, the external muscles around the hip at the front by squeezing your bum. If you squeeze your bum right now, you will feel the stretch on that front leg get a lot worse or better, depends on how you look at it. Okay, so we're still breathing nice and steadily into that muscle. Big deep breaths into the nose out through the mouth. I can feel mine releasing now really nicely. Again, it's important to keep your chest up and we're trying to keep the hips straight. Don't start leaning in and remember pushing the knee into the other knee. Don't let it kick out. Okay? And we go to the other side. So again, if you need to balance, just turn yourself around. I'm not gonna turn my back to you, so I'm gonna do it here. So again, in this position, this is always gonna test your balance and how active your glutes are. But again, if you start to lose your balance, you just place your finger on your nose. It sounds weird, but it does work. Again, remember, squeeze the bum on the same leg that you are stretching, 
push the knee into the other knee so we're keeping the legs nice and close everything else tight don't lean forward too much try not to arch your back and big 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 deep breaths through the nose out through the mouth into the nose out through the mouth nice and steady i can feel mine starting to release now i can get a little bit of extra range on it remember don't pull past the comfortable range don't cause yourself pain it's supposed to be a stretch where you can get the most out of it we're not looking to damage muscle we're not looking to cause pain or more dysfunction okay so when we've hit around 40 seconds or more dependent on what you are feeling then we release so carefully back down next up hamstrings so we'll start left side because we've done left side first now, the easiest way to do this, there are many, many ways. You can lie on the floor and pull. The easiest way I've always found personally for me to do this is to take one foot in front of the other. It's then to stick your bum out. Now, that part is very, very important. You'll see a lot of people trying to do this stretch and doing this. Completely useless, not gonna do anything for you. So, we're putting one foot out in front of the other we're on the heel, we're gonna lift the toe. That's gonna put some tension down the back of our leg. Now, at that point, we're gonna stick the ass out Okay, really stick your bum out, arch your back, and lower yourself in as far as you can go. Now, what I can feel immediately is tension all the way down the back of my hamstring. I can feel some in my calves as well because they're very, very tight. You may do the same, but so long as you can feel that tension in the hamstring, this is a nice, simple stretch for you. You don't need any apparatus. You can do it outside in the park. Even when it's raining, you're not gonna have to lie on wet grass, but what you do need to do is keep your back completely straight tilt your pelvis like you're sticking your ass out and you need to find that stretch along your hamstring don't cave in big big deep breaths as always almost there we're going to hold for about another 10 seconds again more if you want to easiest way to do that guys if you just want to keep following the video and you don't already know the routine you will have to do it twice just pause the video and then you can move on and there we go so mine's released, I'm then going to turn around so you can see the other side. Exactly the same thing. I'm going to place one foot out in front of the other, really simply. I'm going to stick my butt out and I'm going to slowly lower myself in until I feel the tension in the hamstrings. Now what's interesting, and a lot of you will find the same, is that there's a huge difference in tension on my left calf versus my right. Because when I pull into this stretch on this side, I can feel my uh, hamstring stretching way more than my calf whereas on the other side it took me about 10-15 seconds to get a proper stretch in the hamstring now that shows that there's some dysfunction in my lower body there is some tightness in places that i don't have on the other side and that will always eventually <coughs> excuse me manifest itself in injury something called the cumulative injury cycle when one thing goes it tends to set up a chain reaction so what we really need to try to do is to take care of ourselves and prevent this from happening we'll hold this for about another 10-15 seconds all of you out there ideally as well should be foam rolling. I will do another video on that to give you a basic foam rolling routine. But all of you out there should be foam rolling regularly to release any adhesions in the muscle and to just to try and keep it healthy. And that again is gonna help you with these stretching routines. Okay, so my hamstring's done, my calf's done, my quad's done. Next one we're gonna do, you have options here. You can either do it straight on the floor, so we'll turn back to the left leg. Easiest thing, to do for your hip flexors. So we're talking about deep hip flexors here, muscles inside the hips, your psoas, and they connect onto your femur, essentially, the, the big bone that runs through the top of your leg, the, your thigh. They run through the abdominal wall and kind of through your entire uh, torso and connect to your lower back. And usually, the issue with uh, back problems, things like that, it's very rarely the back itself. It's usually, the hip flexors pulling too hard on the lower back, which manifests itself as issues in the back, very, very rare that it is actually the back, or pain and tightness in the uh, hips, in the glutes. So what we're gonna do in this position, we're gonna set ourselves up like we're gonna propose to somebody. We are gonna lean forwards with our chest up, just basically trying to push the hip that way as far as we can, okay? Again, to get a better stretch out of this and use a, a, a technique called reciprocal inhibition, we can squeeze the opposing muscle. So the opposing muscle to our hip flexor, our psoas complex is our glutes. So if we squeeze the glutes harder, that's gonna put more of a stretch through this part of the, uh, the hips, which is obviously what we want. 
So again, big, big deep breaths, and you'll find as you stretch it more, you're able to push slightly deeper into it and allow it to release. Don't lean forwards like that because that's gonna prevent the stretch. We want to make sure we're really squeezing our bum and tucking the pelvis under and getting that stretch. We'll hold this for about another 10 seconds. Big deep breaths. And there we go. Right, then we go to the other side. One of the things you can do with this, you've got the step there, but you can also, if you find that you're very, very tight in the front of the hips, and sometimes this is gonna be true for a lot of you girls who do um, lots of abductions, you know, you're trying to work your booty, but quite often you're hitting the wrong muscle because your glutes aren't working properly. So you're gonna end up really, really tight in the front of the hip here. You can lift your back leg up like so, whilst doing this one, and that's gonna to help to stretch that out. For me, because I'm on a concrete floor, it's gonna hurt my feet. Oh, sorry, hurt my uh, knees, so I'm not going to. But by all means, if you find you're very, very tight there, you can. So again, we're back in this position. We're squeezing the glutes really, really hard to stop the back from arching and prevent any tilt. The idea is we're essentially trying to get the shoulder and the knee, this line, as far behind the hip as possible. We wanna create a reverse C over time. And the better we can do that, the less likely we are to have back problems, certainly back problems that stem from an overtight psoas or hip flexor complex. So big, big deep breaths. Bearing in mind, you're gonna be able to move through this a lot faster when you do it by yourself. It's just because I'm talking all the way through it. Okay, so hips done, so gradually come back out of that. Now, the next one you can either do by yourself, where you tuck, your foot up onto the top of your knee and you crouch down. Hold on to something and allow it, but what I'm gonna do, just for the sake of this, is I'm gonna use this step. So you can sit on a chair, a bench in your gym, anything like that. Now what we're gonna do, is we our knees at about 90 degrees, place one ankle up on top of the other leg. Now what you should be feeling when you do this, is tension around the kind of glute, the side of the glute here. We're gonna try and keep our body upright, we're not gonna slouch forwards, and if you can't quite feel that stretch, push down on the knee. And what you should feel is the whole glute stretching nicely. Don't overstretch it, don't push it too hard. It should be a nice, pleasurable kind of release, as dirty as that sounds. Big, big deep breaths, breathing that energy, breathing all the air into the muscles. The attention of that is gonna help to release and get them moving properly. This one is especially important if you have back problems because quite often, as I've said, back problems are usually hip flexor problems or it is radiating pain from your glutes. It causes tightness across the lower back and people think, oh shit, no, my back, my back's not, not in good condition. It's not strong, it's not this, it's not that. It's quite often just because you are a little bit tight in certain areas and it's very, very easy to release. So we've done about 40 seconds on there. We're gonna drop that one down. We're gonna go to the other side. It's the same thing. And you, again, you may find, as with me, is that you are more flexible on one side than the other. But it's exactly why we do these kind of stretches and we do them both on each side. So again, if you can't feel that tension, you push down on this knee to try and get more stretch in the glute, but don't overstretch it, don't overdo it on anything, because you can cause damage stretching if you push too far. So again, breathing through constantly. And as I say, once you've done this routine a couple of times, it will become very, very easy. You won't need to watch the video. You can come back to recap, um, but you'll be able to get this routine done in maybe five minutes in your gym after you have trained. Very, very simple. We're gonna hold this for about another 10 seconds. Big, big deep breaths, making sure you're breathing all that energy down into the muscle. In five, four, three, two, one. And there we go. That one's off, right. That's glutes, hamstrings, quads, hip flexors, calves. We're gonna to start to move up to the upper body now. I'll move the step out of the way slightly. Now, very, very simple stretches for your upper body. We need to try and make sure that the shoulders are always relatively mobile. One of the easiest ways to stretch the posterior shoulder is to simply pass your arm across your body with your thumb facing up. Okay, so we come across there and then with your other arm, simply pull it in. Okay, so flex that other arm and pull it in. What I should be able to feel now is a nice big stretch along my rear delt, which is in there. Sometimes in your tricep, if you are relatively tight, and certainly 
between the shoulder blades in your retractors. So we're gonna breathe through this. Again, 40 seconds to a minute maybe, more if you like it, you feel like you may need it. It's very, very important to keep your shoulders mobile across all planes, front, back, sides, etc., because it's a complex joint. You don't really want it tightening up. You don't want it becoming immobile because if it is, it's going to cause you problems. Quite often issues with the elbow, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, things like that, are usually imbalances, strength imbalances or mobility issues in the wrist or shoulder. The elbow then has to compensate, which can cause inflammation and all sorts of dysfunction, which we don't want. So again, for me, I can feel that starting to release now. So we're gonna take a few more seconds. Big, big deep breaths. Hopefully I've not covered the mic and you can still hear me. And there we go. And then we go to the other side. So we just open up, straight around to the other side. And I can immediately feel here that I have a big, big difference in flexibility one side to the other. I can feel that my shoulder's trying to lift up on this side. But over time, that will sort itself out if we're doing this after our training sessions. Big, big deep breaths all the way through, breathing life into those muscles, getting them to release. Again, really, really push in. And if you can, try to keep your arms straight. Try not to bend your arm because it's going to take a little bit of the fascial tension off the shoulder, which we don't really want. Nice and steady. I'm going to go for about another 10 seconds. I can feel mine starting to release nicely now. <sighs> Big deep breaths. In four, three, two, one, and relax. Now, this is gonna be another one that is especially true for you guys. We need to do a pec stretch. Girls, you can seriously benefit from it as well because quite often um, with what we call an upper cross syndrome or even mild upper cross syndrome, where we're a little bit internally rotated here, we don't have great posture. What we try to do in the live up plans, as you will all know, is try to balance that out. We try to make sure that you have much, much better posture a couple of weeks in than you did when you started. That's the art of the programming. But what we also need to do to make sure that works well and to get the best aesthetic out of you, as well as a lack of joint dysfunction, is to make sure you're stretched out on the front as well. So the easiest way to do this, I'm gonna step over to this uh, machine in a second. You can do this on a door frame on a wall anything like that and we're just going to try and open up the shoulder so we put the elbow just up above the shoulder line and we're going to push into a wall or a door frame like so give me two seconds i'm going to rotate the camera so you can see it properly okay so we're back at it now all we're going to do and you can do this on a door frame a wall anything like that we're going to lift the elbow just up above shoulder height a little bit press it into the wall or the door frame and we're going to try and rotate away so i'm going to try to turn that way and what you'll feel hopefully if everything's going right is you're going to feel a big big stretch across your pec here okay it's going to come in from the center of your chest right out into the shoulder again don't overstretch it all of us are going to be feeling this slightly differently which is totally cool it's inevitable but over time we want to try and get that opened up one of the things that you can benefit from is not only turning away it's also to lean forward slightly so i'm turning this way but if I also lean forward, as in I'm leaning towards you now, I can get a greater stretch on that pec. Very, very important, this stretch. Big, big deep breaths into the muscle. Awesome, and then we go to the other side. And there we are, straight into the other side. Hopefully you can still see me even with the sun behind me. It's not overexposed too badly. Big, big deep breaths, stretching through there. And again, for me personally, I can feel that my left pec is considerably tighter than my right. Now, I do have a large chunk of muscle missing at the bottom of my left pec, which doesn't help, and that's caused a lot of dysfunction through my left shoulder. Um, but again, each of us is gonna be individually different here, so it's just a case of stretching within your capabilities and to your limits. Very, very easy. Breathing through it, breathing into that muscle. Again, we're rotating this way, and we're gonna lean forwards ever so slightly. And what you'll find is if you feel like the stretch is in the front of your shoulder more than it is in your chest, it's probably because your arm is too low, okay? Make sure that elbow is up a little bit higher. You're gonna follow the line of the pec and really get that stretch. Gonna hold for about another 10 seconds. So big, big deep breaths.
One more big deep breath. Done. Now we're going to go on to triceps and biceps. Okay, last two main easy stretches you can do without anything getting too complicated is we're going to do our triceps. So very, very simply, you're going to place your arm over your head. You're going to squeeze your biceps. So imagine you're trying to touch the center of your back. Now once you are there, you are going to pull that elbow across towards the other shoulder. Try and keep your arm back. And what this is now doing is putting a really, really big, nice stretch on my tricep. You're breathing into it. You can always get somebody else to help you with this one. If there's someone nearby to just press your hand into the center of your back, right down the bottom of your neck, between your shoulder blades, and then just push your elbow across towards the opposite side. It's a really, really, really nice stretch for the triceps. And again, for shoulder health, we want to be stretching both front and back. So it's important that we get the bicep and tricep as well in order to make the most out of this stretching routine. Remember, your biceps and triceps get involved in all sorts of movements. So even if you don't train them directly, they will be tightening up quite considerably. They're involved in any pressing or pulling movement um, and various actions of the shoulder. So be aware of that. I can feel mine loosening off now. So we're going to give it about another 10 seconds. Remember, with all of these, you can do as many as you want. In five, four, three, two, one. And release. That one, interestingly for me, is I can feel it burning. It needs stretching that much, I can actually feel it burning. So we're gonna go to the other side. So we lift the arm up, squeeze the bicep, try and place the hand in the middle of the back. And with the other arm, we're simply pulling it across. And immediately I can feel that stretch in my bicep. Oh, sorry, in my tricep. It comes right down in towards the lat. I can even feel a little bit between my left shoulder blade as well. Just on the inside edge of my left shoulder blade, which says, Again, this dysfunction that I talk about in my own shoulders because of the muscle that's missing in my pec, um, that's having an effect. But it's very, very good. So try to pay attention to where you feel these stretches. Try to pay attention to what's going on. And that's gonna help you to understand your body a little bit more and the kind of dysfunction that you may have and why certain things may hurt more than they should. The better knowledge you develop of your body, the better you're going to be able to handle it. It's so one of the major things that we try to promote on Live Up is I'm trying to teach you how to do things yourself, trying to teach you how to understand the things that we do and why we do them to make this plan completely sustainable for you. Mine's released now, so I'm going to wait about another 10 seconds. And then three, two, one, and down. Right, now the final one that I really, really like is a bicep stretch. This is really, really simple. You have a few options here. You can either grab something behind you and open your chest up completely like this. I don't like that because it stretches the shoulder very, very well indeed, but it tends to miss the bicep a little bit. If you want to learn how to stretch the front of your shoulders, this is a good one, providing you are safe. So you're simply leaning away from this and over time, the higher your hands can go up behind you, the better the front of your shoulder is going to stretch. Try and draw your shoulder blades back as far as you can and breathe through it. That for me doesn't work terribly well as a stretch, but it's one for you there if you need it. What we're going to try and do is the bicep stretch. And for me, it's tricky to stretch the bicep, but one of the best ways I find to do it is I'm going to lay my hand on a wall or a door or a machine or anything like that. See how I have my, my, my thumb facing forwards. I'm simply going to turn away from it like I was doing my stretch with my pec only this time my arm is completely straight and the inside edge of my hand is on that uh, beam. Again, door frame, whatever, even a person. Now, I'm turning away from it, I'm turning this way, and by keeping that inside edge of my hand, and now I'm flexing my wrist backwards a little bit on that hand, I can find a much, much bigger stretch across my bicep. Again, it's important for proper growth and recruitment of your bicep that it works correctly that the shoulder is healthy, your bicep needs to be lengthened and not restricting movement around that shoulder or around the elbow. So have a play around with your hand and wrist position during this stretch to try to find the point where you feel that stretch the most. Again, we're still breathing into it. I can feel mine starting to go immediately. Now we've got it, I say immediately, it was still a good 30 seconds. Feels nice. This for me feels really, really nice. I can feel it loosening the tension around my elbow and my shoulder. I'm a big fan. I'm a big, fa big fan. And that's that one done. 
and we do exactly the same with the other side. And now we're onto the other side. So again, same thing. Find that position with your hand where you can feel this bicep stretch to its maximum point. But again, we're not trying to cause pain. We're just trying to get a nice, gentle release. We're trying to help the muscle calm itself down, switch itself off and help to mobilize that joint a little bit. But spend as long as you need. And again, just to recap, because this is the last major stretch we're gonna do. We'll do a neck actually after this. Um, once you have this routine down, and it will get really, really easy to memorize because you just remember, work from the ground up. Really, really simple. Once you've done that, you don't have to spend the 25 odd minutes we've done in this video stretching off. You can either follow this video if you want with me to get a real good stretching routine, or you can just do it for 40, 50 seconds at the end of every single workout. You can move through it very, very quickly. I can feel mine starting to switch off now. It's very, very good. I'm gonna wait about another five seconds from here. Four, three, remember we're flicking the wrist around. Two, one, done. Now I'm gonna switch the camera again, put you back over there. All right, so final stretch we will do. It's just a neck stretch. It's important for quite a lot of you. So what we're gonna do, place our hand with our palm facing backwards behind our back like so. Okay, once I'm there, I'm gonna take my hand on the other side of my head and I'm gently gonna, gently going to pull it towards this shoulder. I'm basically trying to get my ear to tap that shoulder. Again, breathing into it. This one's gonna be especially important for a lot of you, especially if you work at desks, you spend a lot of time on your phone, anything like that. You need to make sure your neck is moving. Now you can lift your chin or you can lower your chin a little bit and that's gonna help you to find where you are feeling most tight. And it's important when you're stretching to find that point. Don't avoid the areas that you know to be tight. That would be a mistake. We're gonna hold this for about another 10 seconds. Nine, eight, remember to keep breathing. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then we go to the other side. Nice and gently release the neck, then release the arm, and then we go in with the other side. Again, expect to feel some discrepancy side to side here. So we're pushing that ear down towards the opposite shoulder. We're gonna pull a little bit with the arm. Now don't pull too much, especially if this is the first time you've done this, you're just trying to find that tightness. You're not trying to cause pain. You're not trying to get your body to pull back hard against you because if you're causing too much resistance, it is going to fight it and that's not going to be good for you. Big, big deep breaths. It's a really, really nice one to do in the morning and before bed as well, to try and release any tension across the neck. Again, rotating the neck just a little bit, lifting the chin to try and find that point of bind. For so many of you get quite bad headaches. Often this will be the reason you'll be tight through the SCM, the stenoclidomastoid, which is sitting on the front of the neck and the scalenes, which kind of sit down here. So it's important to mobilize yourself and to keep your joints healthy. Being strong is great. Being powerful is great. But in order to be really strong and really powerful, it's important that you also move well, that you are healthy and you are happy. By releasing tension in your muscles once or twice a day, even if you're not training, running through this stretching routine for five or 10 minutes a day, even twice per day while you're sitting in front of the sofa, can do absolute wonders for your body, for your training, for your strength, for your performance, and your longevity with all of the above. It's also important from an aesthetic point of view to understand that when your joints are moving correctly, you can stimulate muscles differently. So for some of you out there who may have lagging body parts, by stretching correctly, you are gonna be able to bring that body part up. It could simply be that you can't get the appropriate joint in the right position in order to stimulate proper growth out of that muscle. This is often especially true for biceps, triceps, delts, things like that. If you can't get your shoulder into the right position, it's very, very difficult to develop those muscles. So as I say, you don't have to watch this video every single time. Get the routine down and then spend five to 10 minutes stretching post-workout, after your workouts, every time you train, do the dynamic um, warm-up before your workout. And this should, with the two of them 
together, it should allow you to maintain a very, very healthy, strong, flexible body. There are, of course, certain stretches you can do which are very, very specific and can remedy certain ailments and certain imbalances. But right now, for the sake of this video, we were just keeping it very, very simple. Shorten this down, condense it now you've watched it to about 40 seconds to a minute per stretch. It should take you five to 10 minutes per side, depending on how long you're holding each stretch for. And enjoy, stay healthy.